Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can pull off this cool card hover effect just using two lines of CSS. We recently had a client who wanted this type of functionality. I was going to use a flip box to do this, but I wanted to show you that you can have anything within your hover effects right here. So let me go to the back end and show you some of the limitations with the flip box and then how we can build this out. And here we are on the back end of that page. So yeah, let me pull in the flip box and show you that you have a lot of limitations if you wanted to go this direction. So usually when you do a flip box, it has that sort of transition. The client wanted to have it where it hovered up. So I originally thought, okay, cool. I know that they have this slide right here. So it could slide up just like my example above. But then the limitation is this. You can only have like your header, description, and a button. So you're never going to be able to add multiple buttons or any sort of other widgets in there. Because if you look right here on the back, this is all you have. So you're not going to be able to add anything custom within here. So that's why you can pull off this right here. Very easy process. It just takes a little bit of setting up. Two lines of CSS and you can do anything in this hover effect. So now I'm going to show you how I built this out from scratch. So what I'm going to do in this example is just keep this one up here. But first, let me show you how that's structured out so it makes some sense. So all of these things are sitting in one big container. And then under each one of these, I have the four columns. So I have them you know, labeled right here. And then inside of each one, I have this special hover card. And then there's some CSS that's pulling up you know, that little animation. And inside of that hover, we have a header, the text editor, and then I did another container to show you that you can do anything within here. So I, this extra container is actually these two buttons right here. So I just wanted to show that you can pretty much put anything within this container. As long as it kind of fits in the height, you'll be good to go. But first, let's go ahead and set up the main structure. So I'm going to go click right down here, go to Flexbox. And then you can actually click this uh, one right here if you have like four columns. They have this preset template. So it's automatically going to pull in your columns right here at 25% width. So this is exactly how we want to start it out. Uh, in this case, up here, I have this set to like 1400 for the width. So you can go ahead and do something along those lines. That way you can see that you know it's going to fit all within this little kind of container I have on the website. So I found the easiest way to do this is actually build out the very first one in full and then just duplicate that into each one of these containers. Okay, so the very first thing is we need to make sure that this container, like it by default is at 25%. So we got 25% for each one of these. So that's the correct one. Now what we need to do is set the min height of this container. So I knew that this up here was gonna be like around 340 pixels or so. So right here where it says min height, you make sure you're on pixels because this is how everything's gonna work correctly. So as you can see, when I do 340 pixels, it's automatically going to stretch all of these other containers. Now what we can do is go underneath the styling of that container and give it a background. So in this case, I have a picture of the Eiffel Tower. Just go ahead and select that. And if you don't have your image size to like 320 pixels, you can go ahead and do that if you want. That'll be a little more optimized. Or in this case, I'm just going to show you that if you have it as like a featured image or something like that, you can always just use the same image. So let's go ahead and do center, center. So you can see right here, that's putting it right there in the middle. Uh, you're going to do no repeat. And then you're going to want to make sure you choose cover. That way it will fill up that container and not do any like weird stretching or anything along those lines. And then the next step is go underneath your advanced and let's zero out the margins and the padding. You want to make sure that this is all going to be flush right here because this hover effect needs to fill up that whole container correctly. So once you do that, you can go ahead underneath layout. And then there's one other option that I'm going to turn on now, and that is under additional options, this overflow, just make sure you have that as hidden. Because if you don't, this might leak over a little bit when it comes to like that padding. So I realize that you just need to go ahead and just for each one of your main containers right here, just make sure that it's overflow hidden. And then the very last step in order to set that up is you need to give that container its own class. So this main container is going to have a class and then that hover effect container is going to have its own class too. So just go ahead and make sure that you are on the correct container. Go underneath advanced and then under CSS classes, I'm just going to call this one pillar. And then the other one's going to be called like pillar hover. So this might be a good time to go ahead and start labeling out your containers. So this very first one, I'm just going to be calling it like Eiffel Tower. And then I like to expand it so you can see that there's nothing in it. So now what we need to do is actually go in here and pull in another container inside the one called like Eiffel Tower. 
So when you do that, you're going to see over here, it added like a nested container. So that's going to be your hover card. And then we just need to set up a few things over here. So if you go on to that container, you're going to want to make sure that you're at full width and the width is at 100%. And then the mid height, this is actually where a lot of the magic is going to happen is we don't want to use uh, pixels, M's, REMs, VH, anything like that. We need to click this pencil icon and then we need to make sure that it says 100%. So that's going to fill up 100% of that container that it's sitting in. So 100% width of the Eiffel Tower and 100% height. Now what we can do is go underneath your background right here. So if you go under style, this is where you're going to go ahead and give it that color. So let's, if you go all the way to like black, you're going to see that you can't see through it. And so this slider right down here is like your opacity. So you can go ahead and change it to whatever you think is going to look good. And then, you know, just make sure that it's either not too dark or not too light. So something along these lines should be good right here. You can always adjust this later once you add in, you know, the text. Then you're going to want to make sure underneath padding, just give it like 20 padding or so. So all of the text and everything isn't going to like be sitting, you know, on the edge of the container right here. So anything that we drop within this container is going to fit within these dashed lines right here. And while you're inside the advanced, go ahead underneath CSS classes and give it a class of something like pillar dash hover. You can change this to whatever you need, but in the next step where the CSS code is, you got to make sure everything kind of matches up. So if you want to just copy and paste the CSS code that I have in the description, you can just call it the same thing, pillar dash hover. So now that you have everything all set up, now the next thing is let's go ahead and add in some of this information. So let me just go ahead and just kind of copy what I have here. And you can see that this is just going to be a regular heading widget, nothing fancy, just H2 styled up some text. And then same thing down here. You could just go ahead and you can paste in anything you want. But in this example, I just wanted to show you that you can have the header, normal text. And then this is going to be something that you can do is add another container inside of there. So if I go ahead and click a container down here, you can see uh, I always like to make sure you have your navigator open so you can make sure that everything is kind of nested in here. So this is like the hover effect right here. So if I just type in like hover effect, you can see that that container I just brought in is sitting within here. So you're going to want to make sure it's sitting in here or none of this is actually going to work. And now what you can do is in that example, I just had some simple buttons. So you can go ahead and click in a button and I call that one like blog and then you can just duplicate that button have that one called like video whatever it may be and then in order to get this aligned what you need to do is select that container that you just created hit this button right here it says row horizontal so that will force it to sit right next to it and now you can just hit the center button and it will center it so that's what's so powerful about these containers that you can move this stuff around anywhere you want and then in order to get this type of spacing what you need to do is go back into your hover effect container and you can hit the down button. So all of these widgets will always be going down. And then this is where you can go ahead and do something like space evenly, space between, if you need to have it at the end. So you see when you start clicking this, this is all gonna start to move around however you want. So whatever fits your design, so something like space around should be good. Now the next step is grab the CSS code in the description below and just paste it into your page. So if you have your new uh, Elementor uh, admin bars like this, the cog buttons up here where it says page settings. If you're in the old settings, it should be down here in the bottom left. Then underneath your page settings, you can go ahead and just paste in the following code. And as soon as you do that, you should see everything start to animate on the page. So let me just show you that all of this is all being controlled with just like two lines of CSS. So what this code right here is doing is pushing down that container 80% within you know that hover effect that we created. It's pushing that all down 80%. So if you change this to 50%, look at what happens. It does it halfway down the page. If you do 20%, it will be like that. So something like 80% will just show like the, the title. And then when the user hovers, they can do that. Then the next one is how long it's going to take to animate. So I have it as like 1.2 seconds. So if you wanted it really slow, you can go to like 8.2 seconds. And you can see when you do that, it takes forever. So you can make it faster, slower, whatever it may be. Usually animations under like two seconds is kind of like ideal, kind of gives the user enough time to understand the an animation. And I like to kind of toggle in between. And then this right here where it says ease, this is like, it's going to slowly go in. So it's not so jarring. So it's not like straight shooting, like straight to the top. 
this is like a CSS variable where you can go ahead and choose ease and it will make it you know, a smooth like animation. And then right down here is just showing that when you're on hover, what it's trying to do is always go back to 0%. So 0% means that it's all the way at the top. So all you're doing is just animating from 80% to 0%. So if you want that effect right there where it just scrolls up, you can just keep kind of everything by default. Now, if you wanted it to be, let's say the opposite effect, all you need to do is just change a few things. So you can just go ahead and put negative 80. So if you wanted to have an example where it came from the top down, in this example, you would just choose negative 80. So now when you hover, it's gonna go from negative 80 on the Y axis down to zero. So that's what's really cool about CSS is that you can change this. So that's how you can go up and down. Now, all you need to do is if you wanna change it to the X axis where it goes like left and right, you just need to change where this Y is. Just change that to X on both of these. And you can see that if you wanted to have it where it was from the left to the right, it's like negative 80% over to 0%. So now 0% is over here where my cursor is. So if you have an effect where you want it like that, you can just change those variables. And then if you want to have it flip to the other side, you just change that negative to a positive. So 80%. And you never really have to change this one unless you want it offset for some reason, but you can kind of just keep this one always at zero and then you just change out these variables. So now it's gonna animate from the right to the left. So that's how you can do all of the four different like direction animations. All right, so all you need to do now is uh, you can just duplicate this four different times. So you can go ahead over here and you can do it however you want. I can go ahead and actually just delete these other containers. Just hit delete. And then right here where it says Eiffel Tower, if what I like to do is, like I said, get one down perfectly and just duplicate it. So you can just go ahead and hit duplicate and then uh, duplicate again and then one other time. There's the button. There it is. Okay. So depending on how you have your gap set up on your website, it might look like this. So you can see up here I have a little bit of a gap in between. So if that's what you want, what you can do is just go underneath your main container. So the one that all of these four other ones are sitting in. And underneath gap, you can just go ahead and hit something like 20 right here for the column. So you can see it's automatically going to add 20 on the left and the right. So that's how you can go ahead and add a little bit more spacing. And then all you need to do from here, of course, is just go ahead and start to change out these backgrounds. So I'll just do one other one. So if we do Notre Dame and just change that, you can see it's automatically going to update everything here. And then you would just go ahead and change all of this within here. And so that's all you need to do to pull off this effect. So now if you go to the front end, I always like to make sure that you go ahead and do some testing. And then the good thing is, is that this will be really mobile friendly. So as long as you make sure that your containers right here, where you have your mid height, you're going to want to make sure that you have them set to pixels. So then on different devices, this is where you can go ahead and actually change it. And I did some testing and on a mobile device, this works really well. Uh, of course, the user is going to have to actually click in order to have this thing pop up. You can't hover your finger over a mobile device, but it works on a click. And that's it for this video on how to pull off this cool hover effect just using a couple of lines of CSS code. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.